check this out. We're gonna take events that are in Google Sheets, click a button and send them over to a Google Calendar. We're also even going to send an email just like it typically does to notify the invitees, the guests for our event. All we really have here are just the basics. We've got an event, we've got a start time, an end time, a date, a start time, and an end time, and an invite. Why do we have start and end times twice? Well, I'm gonna get into that because time is kind of weird in Google Sheets, uh, also in real life too. But we have to do it this way in order for the app script that we're running to read it correctly and write it into our Google Calendar, just the way it is. Anyhow, my name's Eamon. I do tutorials like this for Google Sheets and coding all the time. Really enjoy it. If you like it too, please hit the subscribe button and like this video, appreciate it. Let's get into this. Time, time is strange, like I said. The first thing that I wanted to do was have a drop-down list so that we can actually input from a drop-down list the start and end time for the event. In order to do that, I've gone over here and in column I, we've just got 12 a.m., okay? Now, time in Google Sheets is actually represented as a decimal number. So you can see that 12 a.m., if I put value of 12 a.m. is zero. And then one is this 0 0.04166666 repeating number. Um, so what we've done, I've, I've entered one hour right here. I've formatted that as a duration in time. And then I've just added one hour to each of these hours. So I've got 12 a.m. plus an hour plus an hour plus an hour just to make sure that we've got legitimate times in here. And then I've got this formatted like uh, like we would typically see it. You can do it military time if you would like. And in fact, if you see over here in our event start and end times, it does convert it to military time when we do this step. That's ahead of ourselves though. What we've got here is just some data validation, data from a range, and I'm using that hours range, which is in column I, to pull out all of the hours. You can do this by the minute, by the 15 minute, by the 30 minute, whatever increment that you want. You can also just write in 2 p.m., or that's 3, 3 p.m., but I don't like it when you manually have to do things, so I like a drop-down list where possible. Same thing for the dates. If you double-click these, I've got data validation on these, so the calendar pops up. And in order to do that, or to get it to do that, you just have to go data validation, criteria is valid date, okay? Done with that. So that's, that's really all we need. We need an event name, and then we need the date and the start and end times. I've got this uh, FNA show Gmail that we're using just to test this from the calendar I'm signed into, sharing it with a, another calendar. The crux of the issue though with time here is that I, I need another two columns because I need to combine the date and the time, the start time, and then the date and the end time into one date time deal. So we're, we're kind of going about this in an interesting way. Right here, I'm turning the date into text by going text, I'm grabbing the date and then I'm saying, hey, I want this in the format of month slash date slash year. And then I'm concatenating with these ampersand signs and I'm putting a space in between it and I'm concatenating it with the text of the start time over in E3. And I want that in the hour colon minute format, which we put inside parentheses. And so what we're left with is we're grabbing the date and we're just combining the time at the end of it. But what we have here is a string. So this is turning these things into a text string. When we get into app script, we're gonna turn it back into a new date. It's just the way that it, I found best to work around how time works inside the sheet versus inside the apps script. So here's our information. Let's do one more thing before we go into app script. Let's pull up a calendar. So uh, that's the wrong calendar. That's the one we're gonna share it with. Here's the right calendar. I've created a new one called Dominate Google Sheets. If you click Settings and Sharing and scroll down, there's a ton of stuff in here. All we need is this calendar ID, this address right here, and we'll be good. Now, let's go into Google Apps Script. You do this by Extensions App Script. It pops open this window. I've named this Set Event. 
And what we're going to do is a, a function that creates a calendar event. This is the name of our function. The first thing is let events. This is creating a variable called events. And uh, we're going to use this get active spreadsheet method in the spreadsheet app. And we're going to get range by name, events, get values. Okay, what's that do? Well, it gets all the values in this range. I've named this range events. It's this A3 through G8 section. Now you could do that through G1000, however big you wanted it to be. I've just got it as um, the six rows that we're using for this example. So that's gonna get all the values. And what this will do, the values in this table is a list of arrays. So this first row, this A3 through G3, this is the first entry in a list of arrays. So this would be in brackets and it would have an event, a start time, an end time, a date, another start, another end, and the invite, all those values in the array. So this first row is the first value in the list of arrays. It's this event and then followed by the second value, followed by the third value. So these are just a list of arrays. Once we grab this into this events variable, then I want to loop through it and we're going to use a for each loop by just saying events dot for each function E. And here's where we go into the methods for the calendar app. And I'll leave a link for this in the description. This is the developers page for the calendar app, um, the class calendar app. We're going to grab calendar app dot get calendar by ID. And this right here is where we paste in that calendar ID from our Google calendar. Then we're going to say dot create event open parentheses and E for every E. This is going to be going through each row. So the first time through this for each loop, it's that first row. It is this let's go event. So it's saying E, which is row three. And then we're saying E0, that is E0 is this first value in that array. It's the event name. And that's what we need to put into this create event first is the name. And then it needs a start time and an end time. So that's going to be E at one and then E at index two. So those values need to come from this event start and event end rows, the B and C. This is where we've concatenated together the text of the date and the time. And now what we're doing in app script is we are creating a date out of that text. So this is going to be a date object in app script because that's what it needs for the Google calendar. Um, but we had converted it from date to text and now back to date. So we've got the start time and the end time and then an optional argument of guests. So guests is E6. This is in column G. This is the email for the guests. So this is going to say guests send invites true. So we're going to grab that guest list and we're going to email them the calendar invite. So if we click the run button now, this should add all the events to both my Google Calendar as well as the FNA Show's Google Calendar. We're not going to do it from here though because we did add a drawing here to make a button. So I've got the button, I can assign a script, and then I can put in here create calendar event, which is the name of the function, not the name of the app script. So it needs to be the name of the function. Pop that in here, click OK. And here's our empty calendars. So this is this week, here's next week where the event should show up on my calendar. And here is it on the FNA Show's calendar. Now let's click this button. It's running the script and that should take a second and boom, let's go is already on there. And here they are on the FNA show calendar. It takes a second jam sessions there. Let's refresh once. And there they are. How about that? Now also we've got, here's the FNA shows email. We've got invitations because we had it email the FNA show those invites. How cool is that? Now, the other optimization that you could do here, um, these start and end times, you could protect this range um, and just say, hey, I don't want anybody 
anybody messing with these event start and end times. And that way, if you have somebody shared here, they can't screw this up because you've got formulas in here. You can also go a step further and just hide those as well. So nobody's going to be messing with them. So you got the info that you need, which is right here in the actual table of times and event names. This is pretty fun. Uh, time is weird. Hey, we can get around it though and make a workaround. Hope this was helpful for you. If you found it useful, please remember, like the video, click subscribe to the channel. I'm making more stuff like this all the time. You're awesome. Have a great one.